constructive criticism, chat. Clap it up. I, I, I think we did we did good constructive criticism. We're not haters. We're not haters. We we want to see people win. We want to see people win. Okay. Uh Ricky Rose, man. My boy say he you say he got 12,000 people at attendance for uh at his mansion for his car show. Let me see this shit. <laughs> Two thousand people in the front yard. Only a boss could pull it off. I ain't gonna lie, man. This thing in his crib is so fucking big. He had twelve thousand people. Somebody did the math. They said twelve thousand tickets, and the tickets were three hundred twenty-five dollars and up. Oh my god, how much money is that? Twelve thousand. Was the car show tickets that much? Twelve thousand times three hundred twenty-five. No fucking way. He just made like four million dollars. No way. Wait, let me look. Rick Ross car show. No fucking way. Let's see. If, uh, how much was the tickets? Oh, he had like performances. Oh, Boosie was performing. Damn, Boosie was performing? Bun B was performing? Oh, hell no. Car participants, $750? Regular general admission, $250? Oh my God. Food trucks was paying $3,500? <clears throat> And then VIP parking was 500 bucks? Oh, nah, this nigga can't. Oh, nah. <laughs> oh, nah. <laughs> I was wondering, because I'm looking on his, his Instagram today. I'm like, I ain't see nothing about no BBL jersey. No, nothing like that. That nigga was focused on his car show for real, for real. Oh, that he, he, he definitely made like $5 million. Oh, my God. Jesus. Let's get a rundown, chat. Glory, morning, glory. This is a beautiful morning. June 1st, Rick Ross Car Show. We bless, baby. We bless, we bless, we bless. It's 6.30 in the morning. Ricky Rose been up since 5. Yo, imagine charging $500 for niggas to just park on your lawn. <laughs> $500 VIP parking. They probably just put a rope around it. Yo, get over there, nigga. Nah, nah, this is gangster. Yo, this thing is a hustler for real. 5.30 a.m., I can't sleep. When I start seeing them cars coming like that, I can't sleep. Them cars running all the way up that way. All the way up that way. One time for all the real ones. California, VA, Alabama, Florida. Mm -hmm. Big boys. Yo, Rick Ross might be the smartest motherfucker ever. How much did Rick Ross buy that house for? How much did Rick Ross buy his Georgia house for? Okay, he bought it for $5.8 million. Yo, let me tell you how smart this motherfucker is, right? So he bought it from Evander Holyfield. Um, when they did um, Coming to America 2, they used Rick Ross' house. So Rick Ross rented his house to the fucking movie theater or movie company that shot a good part of Coming to America 2 in his house. So he bought it for, let, let's do the math, $5.8 million. Let's say he gets a million dollars for for them using and renting his house for whatever filming they had to do. That's a million dollars. He did two car shows already. Let's say he gained $3 million dollars on average, each car show. And that's two before this. So a million dollars for, for, for that, 
Two car shows, six million dollars. This is his third, I think. I think this is his third car show. Is this third or, or second? I think it's third. So like seven million dollars, he probably gonna make like five or six million dollars from this car show. The nigga bought the house for five point eight, and not even in just how much it's worth that he could sell back. He's racked up probably over ten million dollars of renting it out, doing cool shit with it that he's getting paid for. And then at the end of the day, he could probably still sell the bitch for like seven million dollars. So that would be like about like almost damn near 20 if you think about all of the shit he probably done. So he's probably going to get a 4X his goddamn investment. That is crazy, bro. Ross is a very smart Corbin guy. Corbin Jackson, you can get your name stitched on the back he's also. A very smart guy, bro. I'm going to tell you the truth. <laughs> And everything is sponsored by Bel Air. This nigga, man. I wanna see my dogs on the mountaintops. Yo, that nigga getting a four hour massage. It's crazy. And you know, that, that nigga got a lot of real estate on his back. You know what I mean? Damn, that nigga living good. It's the biggest Ricky Rose. Car show in the front yard. I just want you to know this and take this in. As a dreaming entrepreneur, let motherfuckers know who doubt you. They doubt is worthless. They doubt is worthless. It means nothing. It has no value. Everybody doubted Rose. And I think about all them people who doubted me. Do they own the shit I own? Are they in the position I'm in? They don't own the jets, the yachts, the cars, the real estate. And it's really the beginning. And I want you to know that because they doubt you. Yo, if, if, if we be honest, compared to all the rappers and his career, like um, 50 Cent had a way bigger hip hop career, even with less albums, but just about the, the success. He has two diamond albums, right? If we think about Ross's career, who could we like kind of, who had a better career, Ross or Jeezy? I don't know who has a better career. Like, we were just talking about music and sales, not who's, like, higher up on, on Best Rapper ever. Yo, but this nigga, Ross balls out like he's a fucking mogul, my nigga. This nigga, this nigga balls out like he's a fucking mogul. I'm going to be honest with you. All right, I'll, I'll compare it to T.I. T.I. has had a way better career, right, like just music, than Rick Ross. But, nigga, Rick Ross looked like 10, no, not 10 times, but, like, he just looked like a bigger boss than... Than, than T.I. Like, bro, he just looked like a different type of nigga, bro. They doubt you. They don't believe you. They don't believe you, but guess what? That doubt means nothing. It means nothing. Believe in yourself. Boss Glock. When it comes to your automobile. Super Bowl of cars, I repeat, Rick Ross car show is the Super Bowl of cars, aka car show. Yo, I ain't gonna lie, man. Yeah, you gotta love Ross. Hey. Hey, by the way, salute to the people who brought their cars here. They're shooting music videos for their own shit. You know, everybody's hustling. You know, everybody, the niggas got their cars here. They're like, yo, we just going to shoot a music video. By the way, I think this is early on. Uh, let, me, let me move. Later on into Morning, glory. Welcome to the third. Let's move early, later into the day. Oh, look. Oh, that's Boosie. Crazy. I'm gonna be honest with you. Having a concert at your fucking house is crazy, dog. Yo, I'm a nigga. Like, I don't be hating on niggas. I love to see the greatness. I could be like, yo, it's possible. 
That's one of the reasons I love Ross. And, bro, having a concert that's damn near like a festival, nigga, at your, like, you got food trucks, you got at your own crib, bro, like, come on, my nigga. Bro, you can't, I don't care what you, you can't hate on this. <laughs> Shout out to Rose for bringing me to this motherfucker. Shout out to everybody who came out here the motherfucking night. DJ, let's go, DJ. If you don't fuck with Booster, hey, what's up? Let's go. Nah, this, yo, this is a shit ton of people, dog. Bro, this is a shit ton of people, dog. He knows his audience too. He brings Boosie, you know, because there's some older people here. Like he, he got, he got the right. Thing. You want some from your house? We All right, hold on. Let me see Bun B. The Bun B. What's up, you guys? We have. You want? Boosie just towed down on the stage. Bun B on stage now. UGK for I'm life. Ricky Rose about to hit the stage. Y'all know what's going on. You know what's going on. You see what's going on. No rhythm. UGK for life. Legend Bum B. Trill Burgers. Trill Burgers still going up right now. Don't let him pimp. Don't let him pimp. Bum B the legend, man. Somebody said this is a mega cookout. <laughs> Live from the promised land. Look at Ross. Let me see this shit. Oh, no. Oh, no. I pray you rich forever, you hear me? I think I'm being big, big. Nigga, performing at your, your crib like this is crazy. Drake's off. Oh, oh, that's funny. That's funny. It's Sam Sneak right there. I just want to see what he's going to do when Drake starts singing. That gotta be Ross's son. Okay. 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 He's not even clowning. Yeah, man, go gang for life. You get what I'm saying? You better believe where your car. Man, like I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of him. That is crazy. I guess we we see why Ross be having so much fucking money now. This thing it turns everything into marketing. You'll never see him without a Bel Air bottle in the hand. I, I I gotta figure out what's his deal with Bel Air. I I heard yo when Drake was cussing him out. Drake, this is Rick Ross. DMs. Yeah, you remember these DMs? Yo, Drake was like, yo, 
Imagine you have a you have an eighty eight million dollars to spend on a crib. Your shits be like steals, like you got them from a police auction. By the way, I ain't gonna lie, I like Drake, but this was these were the worst disses in history. You know why? Not because they weren't good disses. It was just like, bruh, we're so broke, like we can't even relate. He's like your your Star Island house on a sliver of cheesecake. Your lot forty thousand square foot. My my crib forty thousand square feet. Leonard. <laughs> He said, Leonard. He says, hey, you put a rap on your timeshare jet, that shit coming off when it's like other people turn to fly. And then he says, you Brett Berish worker. How many cases you got to move before you get a check finally? Shit probably took a lifetime to see some real bread. So Brett Berish, if you guys don't know, Brett Berish is a guy who owns Boom Boo and Bel Air. So that's the guy who, you know, Drake is kind of joking on him saying, you're working for this guy, right? So this guy owns... He owns um, the Spirits um, company of Bel Air, Boom Boo, and I think something else. But yeah, Bel Air is owned by this guy. Let me look up his net worth. Brett Barish net worth. I only say 300 million. What the fuck? Well, okay. His sovereign brands. Let me see, billion. As per, for, per Forbes, the company that Brett owns has a value of $645 billion globally. Holy shit. That's what I'm talking about. I guess they're saying his individual sovereign brands. All right, shit. Chat, my bad. I'm, I'm on my... Um, I'm on my pocket watching type of shit. Sovereign brand CEO said he, he became a... Uh, Okay, okay. The first industry, blah, blah, blah. Oh, no. What the fuck? Anyway, it, it competes with Diageo, which obviously we know that's where Diddy got a lot of his money from, right? Bacardi, which I think that's where... Uh, wasn't... um Didn't Bacardi own... Oh, that's not wrong. Didn't Bacardi own... Own... um What do you call it again? Jay-Z's thing? What's Jay Z's thing called again? He just got rid of it. Jay Z liquor. Do say right? Jay Z do say yeah. He has sued them and they resolved it, and um, they took control of Do say, but I think they paid him a good amount. This transaction announced on Friday. Um, they'll buy out Jay-Z's 50% stake. And it's the terms were not disclosed. Older Bacardi now own at least 75% of the business. Carter has valued um, at $3 billion. He's valued at $3 billion. I don't know how much they probably bought for him. Oh, apparently, they had offered him $500 billion, $500 million to buy out his 50% stake, and he didn't like it. And he um by the stake and subsequently rejected the rapper's counter offer. Okay, so he wanted 1.5 billion. They offered him 500. I gotta imagine with the the settlement or whatever they did, it's probably in between. So Jay Z probably got a billion dollars. Which I'm telling you, man, like it's that liquor shit that's really getting these rappers to the next level. So we seen Ciroc when it came to uh uh got Diddy pretty much over the hump, right? Ciroc, Diageo, Diddy, billion. They they said that Diddy was being selfish and that they paid out they paid out Diddy a billion dollars. That's what they had said. Let me see. They said they had paid him a billion dollars. So if if we are to um, anticipate that Diddy got a billion dollars from Diageo, Jay Z got a billion dollars from Bacardi, right? Um, for Duce. Um, Ross, I think his play. With this, with this shit, with Bel Air, he's trying to get. I don't know if he'll get a billion because uh, does does Boom Boo and um I think Bel Air is his main thing. Does Bel Air sell that much compared to like you know a Ciroc and and whatever the case is? Which by the way, I, I heard I heard with Diddy it was way more than a billion, right? So they had paid him a billion for like you know fees and shit like that. But um, the thing with Diddy is that he struck a deal with them that 
every flavor. Remember, you used to introduce these flavors and you would promote them heavy. He owned percentages in those fla flavors. So like, when it was like the Coco Loso, or it was like a watermelon or peach, he used to get like percentage in those. So he probably got paid more than a billion dollars. Um, we're, we're assuming that Jay got paid a million, a billion. I mean, so shit. If Ross could even get paid a hundred, two hundred million, it might make sense why he got so much fucking cash. Right now, you know, he's been rocking with Bel Air for a long time. Let's see if we can figure out when their deal started. Rick Ross Bel Air deal. We were trying to figure out when their deal started because he's been promoting for a long time for a while. By the way, th the CEO spoke on it recently. Let me see if we could. A uh, rapper uh, endorsement puts. Okay. Huh? What? Apparently. Okay, okay. So apparently it, it started in 2014. Yeah, he's been doing it for 10 years. Yeah, 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 okay. If he started 10 years ago, he's probably getting that bread. By the way, Ross is such a, like, businessman. He said he was unpaid for for a year for Ciroc as an ambassador. You know, this is back in the day. Um, but I think it made him learn the liquor game and realize, yo, as a rapper, you ain't going to get a lot of money. You got to get that money from, um, you got to go get that bread from, from other things, including the liquor companies. Okay, let me see. Anyway. If you guys have never heard of the promised land, Rick Ross has this huge estate. It's like big as the White House on like a million acres. It's bigger. 300 acres. It's 50, 60,000 square feet. And he has the largest gallon pool, residential pool in America. It's so big. And I've stayed there so many times that someone came up to me and said, have you ever seen the red garage? I said, red garage. <laughs> and I know the black garage. But yeah. I've never seen the red garage. How many cars does Rick Ross have? Hundreds. Wow. Hundreds. <laughs> Hundreds. Wow. How long have you been working with Rick Ross? Yeah, this nigga done paid Ross hundreds of millions of dollars. Yep. Yeah, that's this is where Ross getting all the money from. I think Checkers and Wingstop was cool. By the way, he doesn't really promote Wingstop too much no more. I still think he probably pulled down at least fifty million from Wingstop. He was going heavy with it. I think the hundreds of millions is coming from Bel Air, hundred percent. 10, 12, 14 years. Bel Air probably existed for a year or two. We were doing great. He was in a club in New York, and oh, he said. Ross came in when they were only existing for like a year. Oh, yeah, this is where this is where Ross got a, the majority of his bread. That's why he's balling like that, bro. Existed for a year or two. We were doing great. He was in a club in New York, and DJ Clue was the MC that night, and all there were were black bottles everywhere, and Ross is like, I got to know what that shit is. And yeah. Clue said, I'll introduce you to the guy. So he actually approached you. 100%. 100%. If you look at Ross, he just lives and breathes it. He oh, yeah. Every interview Rick Ross does, he has the bottles in front of him. But, He's the marketing genius. But, I love that but, guy. But you can't teach that. You can't. Yeah. You can't. And I tell every musician, every influencer, follow Ross because he does it right. He knows the power of a brand and it can't be a transaction. It's a relationship. I want to be there when bad stuff happens and I want to be there and I expect mm. them to be there. Ross got in some. Th that's kind of cool because usually, like, you know, remember the whole thing with him and Reebok? Reebok fell back after he said, yo, Molly, you know, uh, Molly on her champagne. She ain't even know it. Like, Reebok fell back. This dude, like, you could have, number one, he's on a podcast with some bitches. Like, it looked like he's he's a renegade. He's a kind of cool guy. Yo, I got a link with this nigga. I need, like, a deal. The fuck? <laughs> yo, let me get, like, an M, gang. <laughs> you feel me? I throw some, I throw, I throw some Bel Air over here. Uh, uh, by the way, they sent me Belair free already, but shit, I'm trying to get on my marketing shit. Anyway, um, okay, okay. So basically, he looks like he's not the regular owner. He's saying, yo, he out. rides oh, with people. Ross, because he does it right. He knows the power of a brand, and it can't be a transaction. It's mm. a relationship. I want to be there when bad stuff happens, and I want to be there, and I expect mm. them to be there. Ross got in some trouble in Atlanta eight, ten years ago. I went down to the courthouse. I went in the jail and saw him. Oh, okay. I was with his mom and his sister. That was the kidnapping shit. That was like, remember when they said, so Ross had left his crib. He left his crib. And supposedly went on a trip, showed back up early uh, um, than what was expected. His workers invited their family over to Rick Ross's crib and was having a party at Rick Ross's crib. Ross was so mad. Ross fucking locked the door with him and his security. I either maybe pulled out a pistol or something like that and basically was trying, was going to violate these niggas. Like, yo, what the fuck? Like, yo, nigga, y'all supposed to, it was like housekeepers or something like that or like cleaning people. Why the fuck y'all throwing a party at my house? These guys go to the cops. 
the cops come in and, and arrest him for kidnapping and all this other shit, and then he gets locked up with him in the security. I don't know if you remember that. In my mind, no one showed. Wow. No one was there. That's and crazy. that made me realize I want to be there when bad shit happened. Oh, that's dope. That's dope. Brett Barish. Okay, my boy. I'm about to follow this nigga on the gram. <laughs> He, he loved Bel Air. Uh, he made it a part of his life, his lifestyle. Uh, we we were introduced by DJ Clue. Uh, we spent two years talking, and then we started working together, and we've been doing it for 13, 14 years now. And I consider him one of my closest friends. Um, that's how it works with me. I, I believe when I call orga you know organic brand building. Everything should happen naturally. If I'm, it's like I can't force a relationship. I'm not gonna run to the the altar and get married with anybody I just met, and right. they shouldn't either. That's why my relationships work. Okay, all right. So we know why Rose got his bread. All right, all good. Um, all right, cool. Uh, what else we ain't talk about? What else we ain't talk about? What else we ain't talk about? So I said we ain't stupid. Rose got all his money, but he's wearing fake watches, sold off a size. Y'all think so? There was this watch guy exposing with Ross. Watch Rick Ross expose. There was a nigga exposing him. It's this guy right here. Yeah, it was this guy right here. He was going crazy on Ross. His name was Nico Today, Leonard. I'm Let, let's see if we can find his Ross videos. Oh, you only did two. He said this. Showing up on the first page of Google might not be the best for everyone, but for business owners, it is. Take and for the little fat guy in the one cubicle office speaking on watches, speaking on Rick Ross and his automir. Stay out of grown folks' business, little right. piglet. Get out of that one cubicle office and go and see the world. You know what, Ricky? You were right. I had to go out to see the world. This is not a bad cubicle, you know. Repping a real Audemir. Last week, I called out fake Ross for wearing a fake Audemar Piquet Royal Oak. He responded, calling me a fat piglet. Piglet. <laughs> but we'll get into that later. I'm a nice guy. I'm going to give fake Ross the benefit of the doubt, and I'm going to have a look at more of his watches. Make sure you subscribe to the channel now, and if you want to buy or sell your watch, prideandpinion.com. Fake Ross, that's where you buy a real watch. Rick Ross, the fake boss. Or yeah, you can park in there, yeah. Perfect. No, there. In between. Oh, the shit. staff. It's hard to get staff nowadays. Is that a garage? That's fire. Can you be quiet? F me. Today I'm reacting to more watches of Rick Ross and I'm replying to his accusations about me being a piglet. I'm gonna see if Rick can redeem himself and see what else he has in his collection of... Well, who am I kidding? It's gonna be f shit. He has f diamonds everywhere. It's fake Ross. Anyway, we'll get to the video. Why is this... <laughs> why is this going up? Oh, my hand is on it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, so-called billionaire's watch. Also not very hard to get, to be honest. Even I had that watch on my wrist. And this was supposed to be P. Shanique as well, right? So that actually means I wore that watch before you. So effectively, you have my DNA on your watch. Rick doesn't even own this watch. He's acting like he's the Billy Big Balls, and for sure he has a few quid, right? But he doesn't even own that f watch. Where is all this insecurity coming from? I thought you were the daddy. Constant fake flexing, what's wrong with you? I mean, the watch is f insane, to be honest, and same story as with the Green Emerald. The Green Emerald AP is extremely difficult to produce, not because- Yo, chat, if y'all were up like $50 million, Everybody know you're rich already. Like, you, you got, there's too much proof of you having money for people to doubt it. Would you just, like, wear fake shit? Or would you just, like, be like, nah, I need to have the real? 
because the watch is difficult to produce, but because of the rarity of the stones. With AB, every single stone needs to be equal. And it's hard to find stones of that size, of that clarity, of that quality, all equal to each other. And that's why it takes so long to produce one watch. Benjamin, Jacob's son, actually told me that this watch took about two years to produce. Not because it was difficult to produce a watch, but it is difficult to find the exact matching stones. There actually were times that they had to stop production because they couldn't find any more stones. And the same is, of course, for the precious stone Royal Oaks. This is the reason why I made this video, is to clarify that Rick Ross doesn't own the real Emerald Royal Oak. It is actually someone else, and that's someone that I know. That watch, that green Emerald AP, there's currently only one in the world. And you were only able to get that watch when you bought it in a set of 10 other watches that were all produced with different stones. To give you an idea, there's another set of 10 Royal Oaks being produced right now, but it's a year delayed because they cannot find the right stones. So why am I calling Rick Ross's Emerald AP fake and this exact Rolex custom or aftermarket? The Rolex that you see on this photo is not being produced. Rolex doesn't make this watch. There is not a watch in the Rolex category that resembles this day just. It is an aftermarket piece. Why do I call Rick Ross's Green Emerald watch fake and not aftermarket because it is actually built to replicate an extremely rare watch that AP has made. It is there to exact replicate that watch. This Rolex is aftermarket. That Rolex doesn't exist in the Rolex category. That AP does exist in the AP category. Rick Ross's green emerald AP replicates the actual watch Audemars Piquet actually produces. So that is a direct copy. Therefore, we call that a fake watch or a replica. The watch that he's wearing here is just an aftermarket day chest. That is worth about 14K. Absolute max. This is absolutely a piece of shit, but at least it doesn't replicate a watch that Rolex has in their catalog. At least it's a aftermarket bullshit watch. And just to clarify this, that Royal Oak is a fake bracelet, a fake case, a fake dial. What is left on a watch? A movement? So 80% of that watch is fake. By the way, with fake, I mean not made by Audemars Piquet, but it bears the name Audemars Piquet. All right, anyway. Uh, I don't, I don't want to watch that. Anyway, yo, uh, did y'all see Eminem get at uh, Meg Thee Stallion? So, um, Eminem dropped a song called Houdini. And on the song, uh, he took some digs at Meg Thee Stallion. Uh, this is what he said on the song. He says, if I was ever to take a leave, it would be aspirin to break a fieve. If I was to ask Meg the what? Stallion, if she would collab with me, would I really have shot at a feet? Now, obviously, you know, feet feature. People uh, thought it was a little bit tasteless because they're like, yo, bro, like, what's up with you? Like, are you are you making fun of the fact that she was shot in her foot, allegedly, by Tory Lanez? Um, for whatever reason, you know, remember when Drake had made a line saying that, yo, uh, what was Drake's line? D Drake, Sir Drake, Sir Coloco, his line was like, yo, this bitch lying, something about shots, shots, let me see, it's, yeah, he says, he says, I've been blown through the money like it growing trees, I've been fucking on a French bitch, say la vie, I just put them on a jet, now they all Italian, the way I'm dressing, I've been to a thousand islands, this bitch lie about getting shots, but she's still a stallion, she don't even get the joke, but she's still smiling, right, and that was, you know, at, at uh, Meg Thee Stallion. Now, a lot of people thought that was like tasteless by Drake, and I thought Drake got a little bit of backlash. He didn't really respond to it, but he got a little backlash for kind of dissing Meg Thee Stallion. Now, this whole Houdini line by um, Eminem, he's not really getting that much, like, you know, anger or people saying, what the fuck? Even though there were some people, and I'll go to. So, Rick Ross has a car show that he does every single year. You feel me? Academics is going over the car show. Rick Ross probably has, you feel me? I don't know where Rick Ross makes majority of his money from. If any of you guys know in the comments where Rick Ross makes majority of his money from, please let me know. Like, I've lately been trying to figure it out. I don't know what it is with Ross, but is Wingstop really paying that much money? Like, Ross has a lot of money. Like, is he really, like, living what he writes? Like, he got who knows what coming from where, and then, if I mean, he, it's, like, money laundering. I'm not saying he is, but I'm just playing, like, guessing. Like, where is Ross making all this money from? Like, 
is liquor like what is it hey i mean diddy made a, a billion off the liquor so maybe ross can too just gotta wait and see but man i mean i'm happy for ross even though he was dissing beefing with drake bbl drizzy <laughs> but you know how you guys feel about everything and if you had the chance to go to one of Ross's car shows, where do you go? Let me know in the comments below.